So you look at them, you look at them dead in the eye, you pull out from your pocket, because I know you've got like a Mary Poppins pocket, a bin, you place it on the floor, you say, you look at them, you go, I appreciate your opinion. Begin the bin. Because we, we're not here for that misinformation, we're not here for the lies. So, day of the week, again, I'm not even going to try and guess which day it is, even though I only have two options. You know what? I'm going to guess. Monday. Am I right? Let's find out. And obviously we do... Can you stop squeaking? It's very rude. And obviously we're doing another video. This video is another TikTok video because you actually enjoyed the last one, which surprised me. I didn't think anyone was going to enjoy it, but you did. And I really appreciate you for doing so. So I figured let's do another one, see what's going on. I'm not very good with fitness TikTok. My TikTok is full of some interesting things. Some of it's Chris Bumstead posing, making me feel bad about myself because he's a beautiful man. Some of it's anime, some of it's COD. It's all over the place. I've, I'm bouncing from bodybuilding to anime to gaming. It's, I'm lost. I'm absolutely lost. It's, it's very rude chair, very rude chair. That being said, if you do have any fitness TikToks or Instagram reels that you want me to see and have a gander at, please ping them to me, either on TikTok, which is obviously Harry underscore TFNL, or Instagram, which is also Harry underscore TFNL. Same handle on both platforms. We're gonna do it, we're gonna crack on with it after we slap something on my head. I'll tell you now, I hope you at home watching this video can feel how itchy this headwear is because it's nasty. As soon as it's got that netty in there, it's gonna give me the old scratches. So what do you think? Is this a permanent look or is this maybe an occasion? Do I take this to the club or do I just take this to the dinner table? What were we saying? Joke's on you, I never go to the club. This, stop it. So, let's have a gander. Fitness TikToks, unpopular fitness opinions, and you know I do love an un unpopular opinion. It's fitness industry edition. Number one, you should not take pre-workout ever. Saying you should not take pre-workout ever is almost like saying you should never drink protein shakes. You have to do what aligns with your goals. I do think that pre-workouts do have a place. Obviously, I know she goes on to say how the ingredients in them, you don't know what's in there, all that kind of stuff. Buy for quality, not for quantity. Again, I don't take pre-workout personally. I haven't for years, just because I don't really consume any caffeine. But I know people who maybe are working very demanding jobs do need it and do need that energy to kind of help them get to the gym and things like that. So in that case, I do think pre-workouts do have a place if it will help you get to where you need to be. Or if it makes your workouts that much better, then I understand. If, if you want to take a pre-workout and you feel like you need one, do it. Don't become dependent on them. Moderation. Take a week off every now and then, you know. Time and a place. I don't think you should never take it. I think it's just very much, does it align with your goals or not? You don't need to eat your body weight in grams of protein. Not even close to it. Too much protein can cause issues like kidney disease. Saying that protein can cause issues like kidney disease is an interesting one because I don't think that's ever been extensively studied. So my coach is a physiologist and we had this conversation a lot long ago. I don't think the evidence supporting this is particularly strong. There is a lack of evidence actually supporting this in healthy individuals, i.e. those individuals don't have a family history of kidney problems, things along those lines. Protein is fundamental in building muscle. Many people may not need to consume as much protein as they think they do. But the solid rule of thumb that's lingered around the industry, if you were to count macros when looking at muscle mass and things like that, 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. For many people, not everybody, just for many people, if you're looking at optimizing the building of muscle. Go on then, teach me how to get my dream body. It's something I want to know. Chris Bum said, I hope you're watching this because you are my dream body. We need to be eating six meals a day, okay? You're gonna be eating a lot of food, but you're gonna eat smaller meals. I'm not back in six meals a day. I just, it's not realistic for a lot of people. I think ultimately the best art for you is the one that you can remain most consistent with. I don't think many people are gonna remain consistent with six meals a day. It depends what your goals are as well, and it depends whether you're a competitive athlete. Personally, I eat a lot of food. I cannot fit that food into three meals a day, so I do have about five or six meals a day. Whereas if I could, I would happily eat three meals a day because it's so much more convenient. So no, I don't think you need to eat six meals a day. I think you need to eat as many meals as you need to eat a day to help you get to where you want to go. If anyone tells you you need to eat a certain number of meals a day, i.e. six, bin off. No, you don't. You need to eat for your goals, not their goals. Meals every three hours that are packed with way more nutrients than you would get in like one big sitting. And this is gonna help fasten your metabolism. I don't know if there's any evidence supporting the statement of increasing meal frequency speeds up metabolism. This is a myth that I used to believe back in the day. So when I wanted to bulk, I'd eat bigger meals less often. When I wanted to cut, I'd eat smaller meals more often. I don't actually think there's any evidence supporting that. Eat for your goals, however many meals that is. Three meals, six meals, 100 meals, that'd be impressive, whatever it may be. 
Oh, Demi Bagby. Interesting. She's a name I've covered before. I covered her in a workout video once. And I think, from what I recall, I think I was actually really impressed. Reminder that posing, angles, style, slash fit of clothes, lighting, etc. has the ability to change how everything looks. Completely agree. I think that's a great message because it really does. I could wake up in the morning, good lighting, haven't eaten because obviously I've been asleep. And I could I'd look in the mirror and be like, oh, I'm ready to step on stage and disappoint my family. But then I'll have a sip of water and a cookie and then suddenly I'm like, Ooh, time to, I've, I've hit Pete Bolt. Time to call my coach. I think it's time to diet. This is also like a contributing factor to almost why it's harder to tell if someone's natural or enhanced from their social media profiles because ultimately most pictures on social media are taken in a manner that really highlights the good things and highlights the negative. It's a highlight reel, isn't it? It really is. So people oftentimes look bigger, leaner, whatever it may be on social media and then you'd be like, oh, actually, I think you might be enhanced. But then you see them in person but you aren't as big as you are in the picture you posted two days ago. That's occurred before. I actually ran into a very well-known name in the industry very well known name I saw him and I was like him on your pictures you are a big dude in real life I'm you, you, you're not very big it's very interesting before we carry on with the rest of the video you know what must be done and that is the bits and bobs if you do like what you're seeing thus far and would like to see more of it let me know by liking the video 400 likes is the goal today like I said we are bumping up we're getting there if you haven't already which I know many of you haven't please do consider clicking the red button down below and subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week twice a week it does really help me it helps the channel it helps the engagement which also then encourages you to push my content to new people so the more engagement videos get especially earlier on the more likely youtube is to show it to new people because it's like oh actually people are liking this maybe you will like this too and you know we want the tfnl family to grow it's a big win so although we don't have a puppy today because he's out on the sesh we do have a cat where, where are you if you do have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video drop it down below the comment question of the week and i shall do so rufus and i will let you crack on with the rest of the video oh let's have a look at chrissy what's she posting today i'm interested cardio before or after weights interesting question good question if your focus is strength training then prioritize your lift first and do cardio after otherwise you might exert a lot of energy prior to lifting uh to be honest yeah i, I actually back this cardio timing is very much depend on the individual the goals wherever it may be some people prefer to get the cardio done in the morning then train after wherever it may be if your goal is strength training and optimizing the resistance side of your workouts being the weights prioritize what you wish to optimize that's a good i want to get that on a t-shirt if your goal is obviously resistance training based then yeah do your weights first cardio afterwards because you want to put the most amount of energy into the weights oh chris is back again hello you want a smaller waist but are you training your back this kind of aligns with obviously a lot of these workouts are like oh small waist workout things like that you're not going to shrink your waist outside of like a calorie deficit but you can give the illusion of a smaller waist by building your back so there's a big thing that goes around the bodybuilding industry of like the v taper wide shoulders wide lats v like an upside down dorito like an upside down triangle if you're your upper body is a bit wider it does make your waist appear smaller so it's, it's not wrong it does give that illusion and that's what it is it is an illusion the waist may not actually be any smaller but the illusion would make you believe it is workout tips from this individual let's have a gander now if you want to target your bicep with push-ups turn your hands backwards spread your arms open so your body can come through and down and up to be honest, no, you will not be working the bicep through a push-up because there is no elbow flexion through resistance here. The only elbow flexion you're actually getting is through the eccentric portion of the rep, which is obviously the way down, rather than the concentric portion of the rep, which is where the resistance is going to be occurring. So triceps, not biceps. And obviously you've got the involvement of other muscles as well. So you've got things like the anterior delt coming into it. You've got the chest as well being the pecs. When looking at like the primary arm muscles being obviously the bicep and the tricep in this case, biceps are in the bin when doing push-up. Triceps are very much out of the bin and doing the work. Mike Thurston is on the cars now. I know he's a popular name in the industry and I don't think I've ever actually covered him in a video before which would be interesting but let's see what he has to say if you want to build your chest even more you should learn this thing about dumbbell bench press should know when it starts to work people are like, oh okay i can feel it the switching on i can feel the firing that's what we want to try and go for anyone could lift light weight and obviously strength is relative to you but anyone can lift light weight and really contract the muscle and really feel it burn yeah i've said this before just because you're hurting it doesn't mean you're working it i would always say prioritize technique you've got to nail technique because you're lifting bad technique you're not going to be working the areas you wish to be working as efficiently as you can you're also increasing the risk of injury things like that but ultimately, once you've nailed the technique and all those bits and bobs are in place and aligned, you want to shift as much weight as you can. You want to lift more and more as often as you can. And you want to do more and more each time you train, which is obviously progressive overload. And a fundamental principle of building muscle 
is progressive overload. If you're now limiting your ability to overload because you're trying to work the contraction and kind of feel the muscle more than actually move the weight, there's a bit of an issue because your ceiling is now gone from here to down here. Another thing to consider is when you're shifting heavier weight, you actually have to try. The focus is then put on actually shifting the weight rather than just squeezing the muscle. Just because you don't feel it as much doesn't mean it's not working as hard. It's likely working harder because it is lifting more weight. You could not perform that range of motion without the muscles you wish to be working, working. Realistically, progressive overload is the key here. Obviously, good form, never want to fight that, always want to lift with good technique, although technique is a bit subjective, I don't think there's one universal good technique, as I covered before a few videos ago, but you have to lift with safe technique and efficient technique for you and your body and your goals. Once you've nailed that, then you can start pushing the weight up. Don't sacrifice weight for contraction. My muscle connection will only get you so far. Okay, last one, we'll have a gander. Stop lifting heavy weight in converse. I'm not backing it. Honestly, I think obviously it depends on the movement you're doing. Like she's talking about lifting heavy weights. So let's assume the squat and the deadlift, for example, two of the free weight movements you are most likely to lift a lot of weight on. Uh, converse, I think are fantastic. Obviously squats, if you wanted to, you can get squat shoes with a raised heel to help with depth if you need it. I think converse are fantastic shoes to lift in. Flat soles, so no sponge. A lot of influencers and content creators, as I've spoken about before, do lift like squat and deadlift in the spongy shoes. Where's the stability going? It's all over the shop. Boxing shoes are also great but honestly converse are fantastic great shoes to lift in so if anyone ever says don't lift heavy weight in converse you look at them you look at them dead in the eye you pull out from your pocket because i know you've got like a mary poppins pocket a bin you place on the floor you say you look at them you go i appreciate your opinion begin the bin because we, we're not here for that misinformation we're not here for the lies if you want to squat and deadlift and converse you squat and deadlift and converse but that's it that's the video that is fitness tiktok with a cheeky instagram reel thrown in there sometimes it's pretty good stuff we like good stuff other times maybe not so good stuff but that is the world of social media sometimes maybe good sometimes maybe not so good we must crack on with comment question of the week and it's, it's a good one actually I, I quite like this comment what do you think about supersets with free weights are there any good benefits when doing supersets uh, i don't think you need to do them if you want to do them you can it's really up to you and your goals. I think supersets can be great if you are limited for time and you want to make sure you complete your workout. You maybe superset some, some movements just to help get through the workout a bit quicker. When looking at supersets, a big drawback is progressive overload. If you're supersetting, there is a high likelihood of you not being able to lift as much weight. There is also a high likelihood that you won't necessarily be able to progress that weight or those reps. So if your goal is, let's say, optimizing the building of muscle, you want to try and do more and more each week, be that more reps, heavier weight, whatever it may be, progressive overload. If supersetting hinders your ability to progressive overload, it's also going to hinder your ability to gain muscle mass. So I would say time and a place. But that is it. That is the video. We've covered everything. And hopefully you tolerated the video. Hopefully you actually maybe potentially enjoyed the video and the headwear today because it's kind of giving me a headache. It's a lot tighter than you think. I also have a much bigger head than you might think. But we're going to blame the wig. We're not going to blame my head. If you did like the video, I would really appreciate it if you did like the video. Again, we're going to shoot for 400 likes today. That is a goal, so we'll go for that. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you did subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button down below and potentially the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week. And if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, drop it down below in comment question of the week and I shall do so. These videos are merely my opinion. You may not agree with them. In fact, you may actually disagree with them. And that's absolutely fine. If we all agreed, the world would be quite a boring place. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating the headwear that's given me a headache and thank you for tolerating the video.